Welcome to Tesla Bytes, where we serve you GIS in small bytes. Today we'll be covering ArcGIS Pro Kernel Density Analysis. In this video, I will discuss the Kernel Density Analysis tool from the Density Toolset under Spatial Statistics Toolbox. I will explain how this analysis works, different parameters of this tool, and its potential uses. Kernel Density calculates a magnitude per unit area from point or polyline features using a kernel function to feed a smoothly tapered surface to each point or polyline. Imagine a smooth curved surface that is fitted over each point. Now the surface value is highest at the location of the point and it decreases away from the data point. The value reaches zero at the search radius distance from the point. This tool produces only a circular neighborhood. In this exercise, we will be using the Austin traffic incident data. The goal is to find out areas with highest number of traffic incidents. The population field is the count or quantity to be spread across the landscape to create a continuous surface. For example, if the population field for a point is 2, it will be counted twice. If no spatial value is defined, then by default, none will be selected and every point will be counted only once. The output sale size indicates the sale size of the output raster that will be created. Sale size impacts the smoothness of the result. The search radius indicates the distance within which to calculate density. The default search radius is calculated based on the spatial configuration and number of input points. This approach corrects for input points that are very far away from the rest. Next in the output unit, if it is anything other than feet or meters, the output area density units will be set to the square of the linear units of the output spatial reference. Output cell values indicates what the values in the output raster represents. We are interested in densities. Finally, under method, it determines whether to use a shortest path on a spheroid using geodesic or a flat earth using the planar method. In the result, we see there are few areas with high density. Any clustering indicates an underlying spatial process. If this is the correct representation of the data or not, that depends on the search radius and the map units you have chosen for your calculation. Or even sometimes the symbology properties you select to display. By default, the data was displayed using the equal interval method. but this one, where I have used the natural breaks method, it looks very different. The search radius and the map units needs to be adjusted depending on whether you are looking at the block level or at the county level or at a higher level patterns. Apart from traffic incident data, other potential applications of kernel density could be in analyzing density of houses or populations or crime rate in communities. To recap, we discussed what is kernel density, what are the different parameters of this tool, what are the factors that need to be considered for the analysis and some of its potential applications. I think this is a great stopping point. This has been Tesla Bytes, where we serve you GIS in small bytes. Thank you for watching and please be sure to visit us at www.tessellations.us. Also, subscribe and ring that bell.